have here is a leg of wild boar. This is a pretty small one. This one is only four pounds. Uh, these uh, can be six to seven pounds easily. Um, and all I've done here is I've taken some Dijon and some olive oil, mixed that together, just a little bit of olive oil to make it go a little farther. And I've just spread it over the whole thing, put salt and pepper on. We're gonna go into a 450 degree oven for 15 minutes, turn it down to 275. And all in all, this thing should take about four and a half hours. So, you know, after you turn it down, uh, it's about an hour per pound. And you wanna make sure that the internal temperature is 180 degrees. So that'll be the point at which it starts to just really fall apart and um, gets tender. This will not have as much fat as your, uh, you know, domestic. Uh, this pork? Pig. Um, because, you know, it's wild. It, didn't, it had to forage more and it didn't have all those fatty things being shoved at it. So um, we're just going to go for it and uh, we'll see what we got when we get done. So let's make a sauce for our boar. I have here three cloves and about 15 black peppercorns. Ten juniper berries, which we just happen to have because we had them for something and they're it was still never around. Made. And I'm gonna mush that a little bit over here. Then I've got a little bit of parsley and a little bit of thyme. I've taken most of the sticks out of the thyme and uh, we'll mush that with those. I just wanna bust up the peppercorns a little. I'm gonna do more of this in, the, in a blender because it's just gonna be more efficient. Well, and the blender's probably just gonna toss those things around and not really push right. them up. So it's better to get them started a little bit. But those are all going in. And then I have a shallot and five garlic cloves. Cinnamon. Ground cinnamon. And I just want to bust this up. So, and then I'm going to put it in a pan with some oil and sweat these spices a bit. Just want to get them into somewhat of a it a little more. And then I'll get some oil in my pan, turn the pan on. And about a medium that burner medium on that burner is pretty high. So yeah I use that burner a lot. I've always been a uh, I'm a fan of the right front burner for some reason. And I'm just going to tip these right in there. I'm going to get this cooking a little and add, a, and add an ounce and a half of baking chocolate to this. It's kind of a weird thing. Gonna be delicious, trust me. <laughs> and um, says the funny man in the tie dye. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> um, so, in addition to this, we're going to have half a cup of port, half a cup of red wine. Uh, this is a Pinot because that's what we had open. I would prefer something a little more robust. But I think it's going to be fine. And we should probably because we got the port. Mention that our this is a local port from Moonstone Crossing. Located yeah. out in West Haven. 
And then we will also, the only other thing that's going in here is a cup of pork broth. And then I'm gonna boil all that down so that it reduces and turns into our lovely thick sauce. And the only other thing it might need is a little sweetener because this is completely unsweetened chocolate. It's going in here. Right well, now. your port's sweet. The port's sweet, yeah. So uh, that's why I'm saying I'm, it may need that, it might not. But I'm certainly not going to start adding sweetener. But uh, I just want to sweat these spices a little, get the chocolate a little melty. You can't. Can't go wrong with chocolate in a sauce. I mean. Cacao, some cacao. Yeah, and that hopefully nope. Huh? Thawing out the pork broth. So. Um, I'm gonna add these. Liquid will help with your chocolate. Yeah. So we can go both the wines. And now we have to let that come up to a boil again. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and see what this is like. The sauce is working. Um, it's a, uh, I think it needs a, to be a little bit sweeter. So I'm just gonna add some more of this port. Oh, good. I'll finish it off. Yeah, because I, I don't want, you know, I don't want it to taste like sugar. I'm, but the port is sweet, and I think it'll help add to the. Uh, it adds a little umami, and this is a. This sauce is, has carries quite a bit of umami with it, and on a pork leg, that's really going to be good. It's going to be delicious. So, and it's getting thick, so we're getting what, what we want here. All right, so our leg is cooked. I've been checking it on the way, and I think it's just going to be right at 180 right now. And look at that. I mean, come on. I want to pick, I just want to pick that up and just <laughs> gnaw on it. Um, Don't forget to, oh, you did turn it off. Yeah. Somebody seems to like post heat a lot. So we have a um, we have a friend who gave us this, but you can find a leg of wild lamb. Just Google it. It's not lamb. Uh, uh, wild boar. boar. There you Just go. Google it, and there are places that sell them, and they will give you recipes. Um, I didn't follow theirs, but I I took their advice to heart as I followed somebody else's recipe. <laughs> um, but. Wow, that's really amazing. Isn't that pretty looking? It is. It looks really good. So in the meantime, we still have, we have our sauce heating up. We have some broccoli. And we made some quinoa with um, pork broth. One cup of quinoa, two cups of pork broth. And we put the quinoa in the pan and toasted it. And then added the pork broth. Cook it for <laughs> 15 minutes and let it rest for five. And it's going to be perfect. And just wait till you see it on the plate. It's just going to be great. So there you go. So we're going to let this rest for a couple of minutes, right? It like has to that. Rest. And in fact, well, it's we should rusting. put it on something. That'll work. We'll cover it. Because <laughs> we don't want it to get cold. No. Okay. Nobody likes a cold leg. Cold pig leg. <clears throat> So Harry is trying to cut up this hunk of meat. I worry about the fingers, the piano's fingers. It's hot. hot. Yeah. But it looks beautiful though. It just says, you know, cut it as thin as you can. So what I'm trying to do is get it to cut all the way around the bone so that we get these nice pieces of meat that we can put on our plate. Yeah, you were doing good right there on that side. That one, yeah, that one worked great. The problem I'm having is there's some 
<laughs> There's some rind right up on top here. Well, that's going to be the tasty that's part. It's hard to get through, but you really, you want that on your yeah. piece, you know? I do. Yeah. All right, so. so this is working great. It <laughs> might not look like it, but, <laughs> but it is. All right, so we'll, we'll get some of these pieces off of here and on the plate, and then we'll and then we'll show you the civilized end result. <laughs> Not the Dexter part. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this is our um, sauce, which has been cooking for a while. I wanted to whisk it to just make sure everything was incorporated in it. But look at this. This is a beautiful sauce. It, it tastes of mole, it tastes of you know, chocolate. chocolate, but no, not chilies. But it really does have a very, a very pronounced chocolate flavor. And the outside and, of your skin there has got some um, pepperiness going on. Oh so, yeah. Because you might have had a couple little tastes. This is going to be good. All right, I think that's enough. Um, What can I say? That's beautiful. Let's, uh... We might have had a taste already. Let's try it. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Okay, so, so that's cooked perfectly. And the sauce just accentuates that gamey wild meat thing. This is great. I think it could use some mold and salt. Do we love on everything? But yeah, this is a this is a beautiful dinner here. Um, we are pairing this with a Jessup, 2018, I think. Yes, Zinfandel, Zinfandel from Napa. Um, Jessup makes some sweet wines and a tasting at Jessup Cellars is always a, a, a beautiful thing. I mean, they're in uh, Yontville, no, we used Napa to, County. We used to be able to go in, just drop in and have a place at the bar with the uh, guy who's pouring our wines and talking about them. And we loved that. Since COVID, they've gone to a, you have to make a reservation and then you sit outside at a table, which is great. And it wasn't as personal, but no, it's still, I, we still left with the, several bottles of wine. I like being able to drop in. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have a hard time getting used to this, making a reservation for wine tasting. But anyway, I think it's really good wine. Super enjoyable. This one, you know, like a... It's a Napa Zinfandel, so it has depth, it's got pepper, it's got, um, what's going on there? Deep, really deep stone fruits. Um, and not a lot of sugar. That's a little different from, you know, the Dry Creek Zinfandels are all pretty sweet. This is not sweet. This is, um, it just pairs really well with this It's just dish. plain good. Yeah. And it's going to go great with this. Our food's getting cold. So oh. thank you for watching Two Cooks in the Kitchen, and we'll see you next time.